Raúl Modesto Castro Ruz American Spanish, Raúl Modesto Castro Ruz, born 3 June 1931 is a Cuban politician who is currently serving as the first secretary of the Communist Party of Cuba, the most senior position in the socialist state, succeeding his brother Fidel Castro in April 2011. He has also been a member of the Politburo of the Communist Party of Cuba, the highest decision-making body since 1975. In February 2008, he was appointed the President of the Council of State and President of the Council of Ministers. He stepped down as President on 19 April 2018. Previous to being appointed Acting President of Cuba in July 2006, he served as the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces from 1959 to 2008. His ministerial tenure made him the longest-serving Minister of the Armed Forces. Because of his predecessor's illness, Castro was designated the President of the Council of State in a temporary transfer of power. Castro was officially made president by the National Assembly on 24 February 2008, after Fidel Castro, who was still ailing, announced on 19 February 2008 that he would not stand for president again. Castro was re-elected president on 24 February 2013. Shortly thereafter, Castro announced that his second term would be his final term, and that he would not seek re-election in 2018. He announced on state television on 21 December 2017 that he would step down as Cuban president on 19 April 2018 after his successor is elected by the National Assembly following parliamentary elections. However, he retains his position as first secretary of the Communist Party, Cuba's ruling party, is head of the Constitutional Reform Commission, and also continues to have a seat representing Santiago de Cuba's Segundo Fente Municipality in the National Assembly. Topic. Early life Raúl Modesto Castro Ruz was born in Byron, Cuba, the son of a Spanish immigrant father, Ángel Castro, and a Cuban-born mother of Canarian parentage, Lina Ruz. Raúl is the youngest of three brothers, Ramón, Fidel and himself. He also has four sisters, Angela, Juanita, Emma and Agustina. Ángel Castro's first wife, Maria Argota, also raised five half-siblings of Raúl, Pedro Emilio, Maria Lydia, Manuel, Antonia and Georgina. As children, the Castro brothers were expelled from the first school they attended. Like Fidel, Raúl later attended the Jesuit school of Colegio Dolores in Santiago and Belén Jesuit Preparatory School Spanish, Colegio Belén in Havana. Raúl, as an undergraduate, studied social sciences. Whereas Fidel excelled as a student, Raúl turned in mostly mediocre performances. Raúl became a committed socialist and joined the Socialist Youth, an affiliate of the Soviet-oriented Cuban Communist Party, Partido Socialista Popular PSP. The brothers participated actively in sometimes violent student actions. Raul Castro's travels and contact with Soviet KGB agent Nikolai Leonov, whom he met in 1953 during a trip to the Soviet bloc nations and again in 1955 during his exile in Mexico City, facilitated Cuba's close ties with the Soviets after the triumph of the Cuban Revolution. Leonov would later become the USSR's KGB agent in Havana. In 1953, Raul served as a member of the 26th of July movement group that attacked the Moncada barracks. He spent 22 months in prison as a result of this action. During his exile in Mexico, he participated in the preparations for the expedition of the boat Granma to Cuba. Topic Commander in the Cuban Revolution When the Granma landing failed and the 82 expeditionaries were detected by government troops soon after, Raúl was one of only 12 fighters who managed to reach a safe haven in the Sierra Maestra Mountains, forming the core of the nascent rebel army see the Cuban Revolution. As Fidel's brother and trusted right-hand man, and given his proven leadership abilities during and after the Moncada attack, he was given progressively bigger commands. 
On 27 February 1958 Raoul was made Comandante and assigned the mission to cross the old province of Oriente leading a column of guerrillas to open, to the northeast of that territory, the Frank Pays Eastern Front. As a result of Raoul's Eastern Front operations, he was not involved in the pivotal Operation Verano which came close to destroying the main body of fighters but ended up a spectacular victory for Fidel, but Raoul's forces remained active and grew over time. On 26 June 1958, Raúl Castro's rebels kidnapped ten Americans and two Canadians from the property of Moa Bay Mining Company, an American company on the north coast of Oriente Province. The next day rebels took hostage 24 U.S. servicemen on leave from the United States Naval Base at Guantanamo Bay. This incident brought total kidnapped hostages to 36, 34 U.S. and two Canadian citizens. U.S. Ambassador Smith and his staff determined the kidnappings had the following objectives, obtain worldwide publicity, regain M26-7 prestige lost by general strike call failure, force Batista's Air Force to stop bombing rebel holds, and gain public recognition from the U.S. Two tactical objectives the kidnapping achieved for Castro forces can be discerned from contemporaneous reporting in time, Batista declaring a ceasefire for negotiations, forcing a reduction in Operation Verano air raids, the rebels used the lulls to regroup and fly in arms. The hostage-taking caused significant U.S. backlash, including unfavorable public reaction, and U.S. consideration to re-establishing military support to Batista and deploying U.S. forces to free the hostages. Ultimately, the hostages were released in very small groups, extracting the maximum press attention. After their release, the hostages said they were treated well with some even claiming to support the rebel cause. By October 1958, after reinforcement by Fidel, the brothers had about 2,000 fighters and were operating freely throughout Oriente province. In December, while Che Guevara and Camilo Cienfuegos were operating in Santa Clara, Fidel and Raul's army laid siege to Mafo, capturing it on 30 December. Their victorious army then headed to Santiago de Cuba, capital of Oriente province. In response to the victory by Che Guevara at the Battle of Santa Clara, the U.S.-backed President Fulgencio Batista fled Cuba in the early morning of 1 January 1959. The two Castro brothers with their army arrived on the outskirts of Santiago de Cuba and said their forces would storm the city at 6 p.m. 1 January if it did not first surrender. The commander, Colonel Rego Ribido, surrendered Santiago de Cuba without a fight. The war was over and Fidel was able to take power in Havana when he arrived on 8 January 1959. Raúl's abilities as a military leader during the revolution are hard to see clearly. Unlike Che Guevara or Cienfuegos, Raúl had no significant victories he could claim credit for on his own. The last operations, which were clearly successful, were conducted with his older brother Fidel present and in command. After Batista's fall, Raúl had the task of overseeing trials and execution of scores between 30 and 70 of soldiers loyal to deposed President Batista convicted of war crimes. Topic: <laughs> Political career. Early political career Raúl Castro Ruz was a member of the national leadership of the Integrated Revolutionary PO Organizations established July 1961, dissolved March 1962 and of the United Party of the Socialist Revolution of Cuba established March 1962, dissolved October 1965. He is also credited with helping shoot down a Lockheed U-2 and killing Major Rudolf Anderson. He served as a member of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Cuba and Second Secretary of its Politburo from the party's formation in October 1965, also as first Vice President of the Cuban Council of State of the National Assembly of People's Power and Council of Ministers when these were established in 1976. 
He was appointed Minister of the Revolutionary Armed Forces when it was founded in October 1959 and served in that capacity until February 2008. Assumption of presidential duties On 31 July 2006, Fidel Castro's personal secretary, Carlos Valenciaga, announced on state-run television that Fidel Castro would provisionally hand over the duties of first secretary of the Communist Party of Cuba party chief, president of the Council of State of Cuba head of state, president of the Council of Ministers of Cuba prime minister, and commander-in-chief of the armed forces to Raul Castro while Fidel underwent and recovered from intestinal surgery to repair gastrointestinal bleeding, many commentators regarded Raúl Castro as a political hardliner who would maintain the Communist Party of Cuba's influence in the country. However, others believed that he was more pragmatic than his older brother and willing to institute some market-oriented economic policies. It was speculated that he favored a variant of the current Chinese political and economic model for Cuba in the hopes of preserving some elements of the socialist system. Raul is considered by some as less charismatic than his brother Fidel Castro, who remained largely out of public view during the transfer of duty period. His few public appearances included hosting a gathering of leaders of the non-aligned nations in September 2006, and leading the national commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the landing of the boat Granma, which also became Fidel's belated 80th birthday celebrations. In a speech to university students, Raúl stated that a communist system in Cuba would remain, and that, Fidel is irreplaceable, unless we all replace him together. On 1 May 2007 Raúl presided over the May Day celebrations in Havana. According to Granma the crowd reached over 1 million participants, with delegations from over 225 organizations and 52 countries. Raúl has a reputation for his business-like, unanimated delivery of speeches. Topic. Communist leader After assuming what was envisioned as a temporary control over the presidency, Raúl Castro was elected as the new president of the Council of State and president of the Council of Ministers during a legislative session held at Cuba's Palace of Conventions in Havana. The 597 deputies unanimously elected a 31-member Council of State for a term of five years, which in turn elected Raúl as president. His administration has since announced several economic reforms. In March 2008, the government removed restrictions against the purchase of numerous products not available under Fidel Castro's administration including DVD players, computers, rice cookers and microwaves. In an effort to boost food production, the government allowed private farmers and cooperatives to lease idle state-owned land and moved much of the decision-making process regarding land use from the national level to the municipal level. In mid-2008, the government overhauled salary structure of all state-run companies, so that harder-working employees could be rewarded with higher wages. In addition, the government has removed restrictions against use of cell phones and is investigating removal of travel restrictions on Cubans. In March 2009, Raul Castro dismissed some officials. In April 2011, Raul announced a plan of 300 economic reforms encouraging private initiative, reducing state spending, encouraging foreign investment and agrarian reforms, as well as the limitation on presidential terms, including himself. On 24 February 2013, Cuba's parliament named Raúl Castro to a new five-year term as president and Miguel Díaz-Canel his first vice president. He announced that day he would step down from power after his second term as president ends in 2018. In 2018, he was selected as a candidate for the National Assembly of People's Power by the Segundo Fente Municipality in Santiago de Cuba, regarded as the cradle of the Cuban Revolution. Topic. Normalization of relations with the United States Raul Castro said in a 2008 interview, "...the American people are among our closest neighbors. We should respect each other. 
We have never held anything against the American people. Good relations would be mutually advantageous. Perhaps we cannot solve all of our problems, but we can solve a good many of them. On 10 December 2013, Castro, in a significant move, shook hands with and greeted American President Barack Obama at the Nelson Mandela Memorial Service in Johannesburg. On 17 December 2014, Castro and Obama made separate announcements that efforts to normalize relations between the two nations would begin with the re establishment of embassies in Havana and Washington. The embassies had previously been dissolved in 1961 after Cuba became closely allied with the USSR. The rapprochement between the US and Cuba was facilitated by Argentine born Pope Francis, who allowed the Vatican to be used for secret negotiations. There were simultaneous public announcements by Castro and Obama about the progress toward normalization. On the 20th of July 2015, Cuba and the United States officially resumed full diplomatic relations with sections of Cuban interests in Washington D.C. and U.S. interests in Havana upgraded to embassies. On the 20th of March 2016, Obama made a visit to Cuba to meet with Castro. It was the first visit of a sitting U.S. president to Cuba in 88 years. Speaking in 2017, Raul Castro was highly critical of Donald Trump's proposition of Mexican wall and restrictive trade policy. He called his plans egotistical and for the border, irrational. You can't contain poverty, catastrophes and migrants with walls, but with cooperation, understanding and peace. Castro said. The U.S. president-elect also targeted Raul in a tweet, saying, If Cuba is unwilling to make a better deal for the Cuban people, the Cuban, American people and the U.S. as a whole, I will terminate deal. Raul Castro surprised a top American envoy in September 2017 while discussing recent sonic attacks on American diplomatic staff. He denied involvement but allowed FBI rare access to investigate the incident that has left 21 people with hearing loss and brain damage. Topic: <laughs> Public and personal life. Castro married Vilma Espin, a former Massachusetts Institute of Technology chemical engineering student and the daughter of a wealthy lawyer for the Bacardi Rum Company, on 26 January 1959. Vilma became president of the Cuban Federation of Women. They have three daughters Deborah, Mariela and Nilsa and one son Alejandro Castro Espin. Their daughter Mariela Castro currently heads the Cuban National Center for Sex Education, while Deborah is married to Colonel Luis Alberto Rodriguez, head of the Armed Forces Economic Division. Vilma Espin died on 18 June 2007. A daughter and some relatives of Raul are believed to reside in Italy. In an interview in 2006, following his assumption of presidential duties, Raul Castro commented on his public profile stating, I am not used to making frequent appearances in public, except at times when it is required. I have always been discreet, that is my way, and in passing I will clarify that I am thinking of continuing in that way. In an interview with actor Sean Penn, Raul Castro was described as warm, open, energetic and sharp of wit. After a meeting with Pope Francis in Vatican City on 10 May 2015, Castro said that he would conditionally consider returning to the Roman Catholic Church. He said in a televised news conference, I read all the speeches of the Pope, his commentaries, and if the Pope continues this way, I will go back to praying and go back to the Roman Catholic Church. I am not joking. The Pope visited Cuba before his September 2015 visit to the United States. Castro said, I promise to go to all his masses and with satisfaction. During Pope Francis visited Cuba in 2015. Topic: Honors and Awards. Hero of the Republic of Cuba. Jubilee Medal in commemoration of the 100th anniversary since the birth of Vladimir Ilyich Lenin. 
USSR, 1970. Order of the October Revolution, Soviet Union, the 2nd of June 1981. Order of the Holy Prince Daniel of Moscow, First Class, Russian Orthodox Church, the 19th of October 2008, for the contribution to strengthening interreligious cooperation in connection with the consecration of the Church of Our Lady of Kazan in Havana. Order of Prince Yaroslav the Wise, First Class, Ukraine, the 26th of March 2010. Order of Lenin, USSR. Grand Collar of the Order of the Liberator, Venezuela.